Hello there, Kentucky educators. This is Justin Browning coming to you from the Barron County Innovation Zone here on the Barron County High School campus. I've worked here at Barron County Schools for 22 years in a variety of ways. Currently, I serve uh, in the realms of transition and innovation for the Barron County School System. So I spend a lot of my time looking at data and I really appreciate the work that KY Stats puts in uh, to make that data available to us. Uh, throughout the state of Kentucky. And one particular report that I want to talk about today is the high school feedback report. So uh, in the high school feed feedback report, there are four sections, four primary sections. And I want to briefly discuss uh, things that I'm looking at and we're looking at here at Barron County High School in each one of those sections uh, as we look to advise students in the best possible way to get them to a place to where we can say, hey, we've done our best to make sure that they're life ready. So I've put a QR code here. So if you're uh, viewing this uh, by something other than your phone, you can scan that QR and it's gonna take you up to the page where you can select high schools from across the state. Uh, so you'll find your high school and other comparable high schools as well. And then remember our topic is how I use the data found in this uh, HSF report as a district data scientist, specifically in CTE and transitional advising. And now let's jump in. So let's look at the data before we really dive into section A. So KY Stats puts this together uh, based on several data sources. Uh, that includes the KLDS or the Kentucky Longitudinal Data System, the Kentucky Department of Education, the Council for Post-Secondary Education, and also from Kia. So they consider this to be the most accurate and up-to-date information specifically for those students that graduated in the spring of 21 and were enrolled in a college and university in the 21-22 school year. So now the question in section A that we're answering is overall how do graduates from this school compare to others in Kentucky? Now on the left side of this page in the Y, you see a lot of data that's uh, also available on the Kentucky School Report Card for each individual school. On the right side, you see quick statistics. Not all of this data is on the School Report Card. Um, new pieces of data include average keys award earned by these graduates. Of course, you've got your college going rate, CCR specifically for Barron County, with the free and reduced, the college going rate, the earned college credit in high school rate, uh, and the did not earn college credit high school rate. Uh, that next one also is not available, and I use this frequently, percent of students earning 30 or more credit hours in the first year of college, and we'll look at that breakdown here in a few minutes. And then the average first year of college GPA being 2.47. So I do appreciate this graph at the bottom of page one in section A, the in-state college going rates compared to previous graduating classes. I can look at data specific to the school or go district and state. Now, in Barron County, we have one primary high school and then we have an online school called Babel. So there's not going to be a big difference between our school and our district. So looking at this data, it's clear to see that 2018, 2019, we had the highest college going rate in that particular year. And I will say, just because I know that that also is going to correspond to our ACT scores. So that was a higher ACT year for Barron County High School. What concerns me is the drop from 55 to 48.9 to 46.5. Now, if that trend holds true, we are just, we would have been a year away or less than a year away from being below uh, the lowest represented number on this data, which would have been 2017 and 2018. Now, I would like to know, and I would, I could figure this out by looking at other data, what impact COVID had on these numbers. So there's a lot of other data you could pull out of that section A. Uh, but a lot of that's found on the school report card, as we talked about earlier. So let's move on to section B. What types of colleges and universities did graduates from this school attend? Now, there is really uh, not a piece of section B that I don't appreciate. So the types of colleges and universities that graduates attended uh, from this graduating class of 2021. So there's four sections, the number of students, the type, and then the college growing rates for specific populations, and then the average ACT composite score by type of college or university attended. I will say that I specifically look at two, three, and a little bit of four as I'm working through my advising process. So let's look at number two. 
So two has four-year public university, this graduating class, 57% of that graduating class that attended, attended a public university. B, two-year public community or technical college. Now I will say locally, that's Sky CTC. And we have 32%, which is higher than the state. Uh, but I would say right now, uh, since this is the graduating class of 2021, that number is going to have increased drastically. Uh, if I looked at our current data here at Barron County High School, the reason behind that is Sky CTC has began to invest greatly in recruiting our students, uh, including the offerings of uh, additional scholarships like the DC to finish scholarship, which rewards students for taking dual credit KC TCS courses during their time at the high school. They take three of those courses. They have a B or higher average. They get a tremendous scholarship and also their tiered system of merit scholarships. So they're in their efforts to make uh, their universities more accessible and uh, they've invested heavily in recruiting and what it's working. It's working for them and we have quite a few students that graduate. So I would not be surprised to see that 32% have in, having increased to 10% uh, or so and to see that four year number to have decreased to closer to the state average. Uh, if not this year, then next year. Then you have your independent universities, your private, other in-state proprietary, and then your out-of-state universities, 3.1%, which is way lower than the uh, Kentucky average. Uh, but that could be the fact that we're we're in South Central Kentucky and we're not really close to anything to our North or South as it relates to public universities. So the part three, college going rates for specific student populations. I will say that the data that I want the most out of this is data that's got a star in its column, and that is 3G, our special education population. So Kentucky average is 17.1% of special education students are attending college. I would love for our local Barron County data to be in this chart so it's easily accessible. I do know the data just from doing the research here locally ourselves, but here in Barron County, we're investing heavily in transition work for our ECE population, even to the point of the system itself received a grant that grant is funding a position. That position is transition coach specifically for our ECE populations here at Barron County High School. So I love the data from Section C as well. How do graduates from this school perform in their first year at in-state public colleges and universities? That gives us a, uh, a solid understanding of how well we're doing and not just preparing them, but advising them. So if I look at number one, percentage of graduates who started as full-time students. Then I look at 90.1% began 2021 as a full-time student. They had just graduated high school in the spring of 2021. We're now in the fall of 2021. So 90.1% 90 started as full-time. Now keep that in mind as you work yourself down on your particular data set. So two, what were they seeking? So 60% roughly were seeking a bachelor's degree. 40% uh, roughly, 38% were seeking an associate's degree. That looks fairly consistent with the last set of data in Section B when we look at whether they were attending a four-year or a two-year program. Certificate or diploma, right at 1%, and then not designated or undecided, just below 2%. So that's the degree. So we've got 90% starting full-time. And of that 90% starting full-time, we have roughly 97% that are seeking a bachelor's or associate's degree when starting full-time. Now, skip to number three. It's three starts the, well, how did that work out? So percentage with first year of college, cumulative GPA of, so this is the end of it. So let's look at their cumulative GPA after year one, A, B, and C. So I'm going to start with C. C being 3.0 or higher, 47.7% of the students that began their uh, college career in the fall of 2021 that graduated in spring of 2021 had a 3.0 or higher GPA after year one. It's pretty good. That's that's good news. We celebrate every one of those individuals. The opportunity and the, the, the chances of success for them moving forward are great. B, 3B, 2.0 to 2.99. So we see that C to B range for college students. We're at 18.9%. So and uh, roughly 19% of students had anywhere from a C to a B that first year of college. I don't necessarily know what to think about that. I could probably go back and look at other data and see what GPAs were from that graduating class and see if this corresponds. 
and then A. A is the part that says, hey, we've got something to work on here. So of the every of every student that graduated, 90% started full time. Of those, of all those students, 33.3% of them have below a 2.0 GPA their first year of college. 33, a third, have below a 2.0 GPA the first year of college. That's a red flag to be. That's going to that's going to impact our advising. It needs to impact our advising. Now let's move down to number four and five and see if that can spell out uh, at a deeper level. Average credit hours in the first year of college. So attempted. So the average credit of hours attempted were 25.1, which is just over full time, just over full time. Completed 22.8. So even though the average was over full time, the completed was below full time. And then C earned 19.8 which means there's developmental courses, those that you do not get credit for in the completed that are not represented in the earned, so 19.8. So our completed and our earned are both below full-time status, even though 90.1% began the year full-time. Now let's go down to number five, number of college level credit hours earned in the first year of college, so earned fewer than 15 hours. So we're looking at 30% of students earned fewer than 15 hours their first year of college. Now, be mindful here that 15 hours is across two semesters. This is the first year of college, not the first semester of college. So 29.7% fewer than 15 hours their first year of college, 15 to 29.9 hours. So this would be those that are above a semester of full-time uh, and just 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 above the threshold of full time. So we're talking 30 hours, which means an average of 15 hours a semester. So an average of 15 to 30 hours, seven and a half to 15 hours a semester. And you're looking at 50 percent of those students and then C, 30 hours or more. These are the ones that are taking 15 one semester, 18 the next or 18 and 18 or 18 and 21, depending on uh, how hard they're working and how hard they want to work. That's who in, who's in that population. And then six and seven, comparing college performance by earning college credit in high school. Six, average first year cumulative GPA, earned college credit in high school. So these are students that earn college credit either through, uh, probably through here at Barron County, AP courses or dual credit courses. So 2.77, if they earned college credit in high school, their average GPA was 2.77. Now look at this, the next one, 6B, did not earn college credit in high school, 1.39. So the average first year GPA of a Barron County High School graduate of 2021 that did not receive a college credit hour in high school was a 1.39. Now that's great data to have, but it's also a huge red flag. That's going to impact our advising here at Barron County High School. Now let's look at number seven, average college level credit hours earned. 7A, earned college credit in high school, 21.9. Did not earn college credit in high school, 12.6. So not only is a cumulative GPA much higher, but also the total number of hours that they attained that first year is also much higher. Both are almost double the one previous to it. So we're almost done. We're at the last section. Section D, what types of financial aid did in-state public college and university attendees from this school receive? So this last section, Section D, uh, really helps us see where our students are being successful and where they're not being successful as it relates to receiving financial aid for their college and university attendance. Uh, if I'm looking at this specific for Barron County High School, we are fairly consistent with what the state is as it relates to the funds that are available. I will say the one thing that's somewhat of a red flag to me is if you look down on number 15 uh, at federal loans, what that tells me is our students are exiting college uh, at, with more federal loans than what is the state average. Now, we need to be addressing that because even though we say that we want more students to attend, we want them to have the opportunity to get training, whether it's a two-year or a four-year university, we also want them to 
them to do that in the healthiest way possible to where they're not incredibly financially strapped as they exit. So maybe we're looking at increasing institutional aid. What can we do to help students increase that aid? Maybe, maybe we're looking at keys and what can we do to ensure that our students get a maximum uh, benefit from the keys program and from keys awards and from grants and from scholarships, whether it be local or national. Uh, so that's the type of things we're looking at as it relates to advising from this Part D. So that is it as it relates to how we at Barron County High School use this feedback report for our graduating classes uh, in our advisement, how we advise our students, not just in 12th grade, but how we're advising them as they progress from 9, 10, 11, 12, even to the point of we're preparing them in 8th grade when they're building their schedule for 9th, is keep that end in mind. We This is where I want to go. So let's open those doors as wide as possible and help them get there. So thank you for your time. I hope it was beneficial to you. And I'm thankful for the people at KY Stats uh, and for the Advising Academy for the opportunity. Appreciate you all. Have a great day.